I got into tourism in 20, 2011, I think it was, I forget sometimes. And we began with an online booking marketplace called Roundbob. And Roundbob was uh, supposed to be um, a digital marketplace to help people find and afford travel. So on one part, we gave you know, the market access to different options of what to book because there was a big gap and there still is a big gap in access to information. And then we tried to solve the cost problem by helping people either pay installments or save up for travel. We quickly realized um, that we would have challenges finding more local inventory. So we had you know, this good idea that we would start by being um, a company targeted at you know, the local market, uh, getting people to travel locally, and then we just realized we'd make more money helping people travel internationally. And this is a common trend across most of Africa. So it's a common trend with, say, Nigeria, where it's really an outbound, an outbound market. Um, but we sort of wanted to solve that, you know. And what we realized was the smaller businesses, the smaller operators, or the people with, you know, new tourism ideas, like the young people who want to build something, it's just too expensive to start. It's too expensive to, to build you know, a website that works, you know, how do you do your payments integration, how do you um, find customers. And we thought that, you know, pivoting or changing the round ball model into sort of a more tech fast or technology fast solution for these small businesses would make more sense. So, you know, we came up with Tripes and the idea was how do we help those small companies get online, you know, sell online and, and grow their businesses. Um, as a result, what we did was this, you know, very interesting Shopify type platform. You can build a website, you can, you know, create itineraries, you can distribute them, you can accept payments. And the best part is you don't need to have any tech experience, you know. I think the thing about Africa is each of these, each of these countries is different. The cultural context is different, the way people think is different, the way people perceive value is different. Um, in Uganda, for example, where we start, and we began in Uganda purely because, you know, a lot of the team is Uganda now. We are setting up in Kenya as well. And Kenya was also funny. Kenya was one of our very fast markets that we were testing in. And we found that the Kenyan market interest was higher than the Ugandan market. You know, so, so it's sort of easier to be able to onboard customers here. I think we had 152 during our MVP, 152 customers in about, I think, 60% were small businesses in Mombasa that say we want to try this thing out. So we find that the Kenyan market is more willing to try out new products. Uh, we have to study how much longer they stay with the product because it's coming on quite soon. So yeah, the cultural contexts are different. And I think you normally need to work with local people to be able to adapt and get your product into a new market. I don't, don't never walk into a market just thinking that I, I have money or I know what I need to do. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all pretty different. We're in tourism. You don't hear very many funding deals in the tourism sector. And yet tourism accounts for almost 7% of Africa's GDP. You have 24 million jobs in tourism. Um, biggest FX earner for many East African countries. But most of the enabling tech is external tech. So the biggest win for us, what it means for us, is that we have a chance to build at home. You know, I mean, I'm Ugandan, but I might as well be Kenyan, I might as well be Tanzanian, because we are the same people, you know? Just different cultural context, if you go back to the, different, the previous question. So we have a chance to actually build a solution that makes sense for um, a sector that contributes a lot to our, our country's GDPs and our job creation. Uh, also, we have been, we, it's, it's a way to validate that there's a lot of value in the sector. Self-reliance is, is a very beautiful thing. You know, when you have a child, you raise them in your home and you tell them, leave my house, go and be self-reliant. The unfortunate thing is as a continent, we fail to find self-reliance and yet we are one of the richest places in the world. My, my dream for the continent is can we be more self-reliant? Can our funding deals come from us? Can they come from African investors? Can, can we not have to keep borrowing and begging and asking? You know? And what can we do for that? Is basically create channels to create more value. And I think what Tripesa is doing is a channel to create value in the tourism sector that's really huge. 
and people are doing this in trade and minerals and procurements and everywhere else. And I think the, the, the entrepreneurial flow happening in the continent now should be able to harness a lot more value. I think we went through the trading era where it was, you know, buy and sell. And, you know, we went into manufacturing and input substitution. And I think what tech is doing is harnessing value where it was never accessed or was never seen. So let's hope that we can in the slightest way contribute to that.